Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, Burrata. Say cheese, but say burrata cheese, because burrata is what we are working with today. And I first had burrata cheese right here in Puglia, the heel of Italy's boot, long time ago. And I was very fascinated by this soft cheese. And you can buy it anywhere in the grocery store today. It's all the rage, burrata. And the word itself, burrata, comes from butter, burro, because this is a very buttery tasting cheese. And it's a fresh cheese. It's not an aged cheese. When you buy it, you get it in a package. It's sitting in its own way like this. And it has a surprise inside. So it's in the mozzarella family. So what's inside are shards of mozzarella cheese called stracciatella. Stracciatella, those are the leftover stringy parts of the mozzarella making process. And so some little genius decided to open up a ball of mozzarella, put in the little shards or the stracciatella, add a touch of cream, close it up, and create burrata. Very clever. So we're going to work with this very delicate cheese today. So for the first recipe, we're going to make a roasted vegetable salad with burrata. So usually it comes in eight ounce package, two balls like this, each weighing about four ounces. So when you get it home, you want to drain it, especially for this recipe. I mean, burrata by itself is absolutely delicious, just with a little extra virgin olive oil and maybe a grinding of uh, pepper, black pepper, and so a little coarse salt. That's all you really need. But there are other ways to use it. So when I get it home, I take it and I put it in a little colander. Save this because you can use that in baking. So I put it in a colander, depending on what I'm going to be using it for, and I let it drain off because in some recipes I don't want it to be so wet. So for this recipe, you want to do that first. So we're going to set that aside and work with the vegetables. So now here we have options. We can use any kind of vegetables for this. It's a roasted vegetable and burrata salad. So here is a Japanese eggplant. And I grow these in my garden. I like the Japanese eggplant because there are not many seeds. In fact, it's almost seedless. So you don't have to go through that whole process of cutting up the eggplant, salting it, sitting it in a colander, putting a weight on it, and waiting for all the excess water to come out of it. If you start with a young eggplant like this and small eggplant, you don't have to do any of that. So you look right there. You can't even see any seeds. There are no seeds. So we're going to put that in a bowl. All these vegetables are going to go together in the oven. And then we want zucchini. So we want one medium zucchini. Again, we want to cut that into about half inch chunks. You could use summer squash for this if you didn't want to use zucchini. So there's our zucchini. And then we've got some cherry tomatoes. Here are some cherry tomatoes. And if they're large, you can just cut them in half. Otherwise, you can just leave them whole. So I'm using my trusty tomato knife to just cut them in half. And then with this, we're going to have some sweet bell peppers. You could use red, yellow. If you want to use green peppers, that's fine too. So here are some red peppers already cut up into strips. You can see how colorful this is starting to look. And then we want fennel. So this is fennel. And if it has a lot of spots on the base of it, well, little rust spots, you can just shave those off. See, wash it first, and then take a vegetable peeler and just go around it and take off that outer uh, dry skin, so to speak. So that'll reveal that the interior is nice and clean. So do that. So we're only going to use the bulb part of this because we're going to roast this, obviously. So when you get it home, you can cut the bulb part off. You can save the fronds for soup or you could add them to the roasted salad afterwards. 
And we just want to cut this into one half inch thick slices. And then we're just going to add some olive oil to this, a little salt and pepper. Our oven is on at 350, and we're going to roast these. We're going to roast these vegetables all together until they're, they're just soft, until a knife just easily pierces them. We don't want to make them mushy. All right, and there is the rest of that. So now we want to prepare a tray. First of all, let me give that a little olive oil. So a little olive oil over the top. Salt, pepper. We give that a mix. Just make sure all of the vegetables are nicely coated. It's very pretty. Reminds me of the Italian flag. Red, white, and green. All right, so now we need a tray. So you get out a baking tray, and we're going to brush that with a little bit of olive oil. So brush your tray with olive oil. Make sure you're using a good olive oil. And then we're going to put those vegetables right on here. Okay. Just spread them out kind of in a single layer. Don't have to be too fussy with it, but you don't want them all piled on top of one another. You might be able to have a little roastiness on all of them. Okay, looks gorgeous. So that's ready. Now I'm going to put them in the oven. So I would say 350, about maybe 15, 20 minutes. Get a little knife and just stick it in there just until they're tender. And while they're cooking, I'll bring over the ones I did earlier. Okay. See that? Now you can see what I mean. They're just tender. Okay. Just like that. Easy. They still retain their shape. Okay, so you admire those because now we're going to make a dressing for the salad. So for it we want again some extra virgin olive oil. I would say about four tablespoons or so. We want some salt and pepper. And I like tarragon with this. So here are some tarragon leaves. I grow this in my garden, but you can buy it anywhere. It's got a very distinctive flavor. So as much as you would like to put in, I think in here we need about a couple tablespoons of tarragon. Let me just mince that up. Let me get a knife. I'll give it a little chop. And tarragon is one of those herbs that uh, people don't use a lot of, you know. It's really got a nice flavor. I would almost say it's, it's peppery and a little bit licorice at the same time, but that's just me. And then we want some lemon. So the zest, it's going to help bring out the flavor of those roasted veggies we just did. So if you don't have a zester like this, you ought to get one because this works wonders in the kitchen. It just takes the outer skin of the lemon and not the bitter pith, which is the white part underneath the skin. And then, of course, we're going to want some of that lemon juice. So I'm just going to squeeze some in there. Okay. Just like that. And now what we can do is get a bowl out to mix all this together. So put your vegetables, cooked vegetables, back in a mixing dish or bowl. Okay. 
And then when you're ready to serve it, you want to pour this dressing. First mix it up, obviously, over the vegetables, like that. Mm. I don't want to mush these up too much, so I do a very gentle stirring. And then, put them in your serving dish. So here is that burrata that's been draining. And I just take them, just do one for you. And I use my tomato knife again. And when I cut the burrata gently, you can see those little shards that I'm talking about. You see how that's filled? That's the stracciatella part, where the shards of mozzarella that are left over from the mozzarella making process are stuffed into this kind of like a pocket of mozzarella cheese. So then I just cut this up into little pieces okay, and add it. I don't mix it in because I don't want this to get, it's very delicate as you can see, it's, it's very, very soft. So you want to deal with it very gently. But it's delicious with the roasted vegetables, lemon juice, the olive oil, and it's just a different salad. It's something besides the old standard lettuce salad that you would have every night. So I would say when, when your garden or when summer time rolls around, this is the kind of salad to have because you can always go to your farmer's market and get this. And then after I have it all together like that, you want this of course at room temperature, I give it another little douse of olive oil just over the cheese area. And that's it. That's how you can use burrata with roasted vegetables. So the next recipe we're going to do with burrata is a pasta dish, a real simple pasta dish that has a lot of flavor. So we have some scallions here. So you need about a cup of scallions, and I'm going to cut those up. And we're going to flavor the pasta with speck. Now speck is a lightly smoked, salted, and air-dried ham that comes from the Alto Adige region of Italy. And this ham comes from the thigh of a pig. So these pigs have to feed on certain grasses. They have to have, uh, they have to be aged for a certain amount of time. There has to be just the right amount of salting. You have to have the proper herbs, juniper, rosemary, laurel. Those are some of the seasonings that go into this ham. So people say that this ham needs a little salt a little smoke, and a lot of time for curing. So how are we going to make this? So we're going to start with our onions. So these are just scallions, and I want to be about a cup of scallions, so I'm not going to need all of this. That's about a cup, I would say. So we're going to flavor this in some olive oil. Let me get just a few more. I lied. Okay. So there they are. Let's put them in a bowl. And now we're going to start to cook these down. And as they soften, that's when we're going to add the speck. And that's going to give a nice flavor to this. So we have this, and we have this. And let's go over and get this going. So a little olive oil in a pan. I'm going to give this a little heat. And I already diced the speck, you see, so it's all diced ready to go. That's about a quarter of a pound of the speck. So there go scallions. And here is the speck. And we're going to let this go until the speck has become soft and is starting to exude some of its fat and is beginning to get a little bit crispy. So it's going to take about three or four minutes to do. 
All right, now the speck looks good, so I'm going to add about a cup of peas. And you can use either fresh or frozen peas. If you're using frozen peas, obviously you want to defrost them. I'm going to add them now to the sauce because that's really going to flavor the peas. If you want to add them at the end and toss them with the pasta, you can do that too. So there they go. And basically, this is it. We're going to add that burrata, but now we have to get the water going for the pasta. Our water is boiling for pasta. Now I'm going to add some salt. I like to use these salt tablets because they're the exact amount. So a tablespoon of salt for a pound of pasta in four to six quarts of boiling water. So for this dish, I like to use chickpea pasta. Really nice flavor with this. If you like chickpeas, you're gonna love this. So I'm gonna cook about, I'm not gonna cook this whole package. I'm gonna cook about 12 ounces. So I'm just gonna gauge what that is, and put it in. That's going to be enough for four people, easily. So you bring that back to a boil. And when the pasta is al dente, that is when we can take a piece out, break it in half, and see no uncooked flour, then we know it's perfect for adding to the sauce. Here's a little trick for when you are going to sauce your pasta. You want to take a little bit of that water. See that starch in there? That's a binder. So you take a little bit of it and you add it to whatever sauce you're making. So I added about a quarter of a cup to my sauce. I'm going to stir that around a little bit now. And now we can take the pasta out because it is cooked. So I take it directly, see, from the cooking pot, taking off that excess water. And if you've used enough water, none of this pasta is going to stick. So please don't add oil to the cooking water. Nobody in Italy does that, and you shouldn't do it here either, because you see how loose that pasta stays. But if you've used enough water to cook the pasta so that it can swell up, it will never, ever stick. So there is our last bit, I believe. I'm going to turn that off now. Oop. There it is. And now all we have to do is stir this around with our sauce. And then we're going to add the burrata cheese and mint to this. All right, there it is. So I've given it a good toss with the peas and the speck, the onions, and now just a little drizzle of olive oil, a dash of salt, because we have salt in the speck, and pepper. And now we have to work with the burrata. So here it is. See? Again, you want to cut that gently because you see how creamy it is inside. And I'm just going to cut it on this board, but I'm going to put it on the pasta. So it's really, really creamy. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Take this. Now, give it some mint. Scoop up that burrata. And this is just going to melt right into the pasta. So just little pieces of it over the top. I wouldn't, you know, do a, a, a very vigorous stir of this because, as I say, this is just too delicate and it will melt on its own. So this is another way to use burrata. Mm, beautiful, this is, this is gorgeous. This is good for company, good for you, good anytime. Another way to use burrata. You know, burrata is not only good for savory dishes, but for sweet dishes as well. So I thought a nice poached fresh fruit salad with burrata would be perfect. So you can start with a variety 
of fresh fruits. We've got plums, we've got nectarines, we've got peaches, you could use pears, whatever it is that you want. So I'm just going to poach these. And so you want to start out with, start out with fruit that's not too hard. You want it pretty, pretty easy to cut up and ripe, but not overly ripe, ripe so that it's mushy. So I just put it in a pan. Okay. Here's a nectarine. Ooh, pretty, huh? That's nice. And I leave the skin on. I like the skin on because you know what? It, it lends really nice color to the poached fruit. And this is pretty served in a nice compote dish. Um, you could serve it, if you didn't want to serve it with burrata, you could serve it with ice cream. I'm just going around that pit because I'm too lazy to get the pit out. <clears throat> and then we have a yellow nectarine. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Okay, and with this we're going to want just some sugar, about a third of a cup of sugar. And as we cook this, we're going to make a sauce. And it's going to be thickened. And then at the end, I'm going to add some lemon juice to this and some almond extract. So let me put one more half of a white nectarine in there. Looks good. We're going to add our sugar, about a third of a cup. Give that a little stir. And we're going to cook this. It's going to take about oh, five or six minutes to get this to come to a sauce. The fruit is looking good now. It's just where I want it. It's still holding its shape. It's very saucy, and it's going to be perfect with burrata. So there you have it, clever ways to use burrata. Burrata is just not for eating with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. There are a lot of ways you can cook with it. And today, we showed you three, starting right here with that roasted vegetable salad that had tomatoes and eggplant, zucchini. We roasted those vegetables in the oven and then topped them with little pieces of burrata cheese. And here is a wonderful first course, a pasta course made with chickpea pasta. And we used a sauce of peas and speck and onion and topped it with burrata cheese. And for dessert, obviously, a very fresh fruit salad. You can use nectarines, peaches, apples, pears, whatever you want. Cook it into a syrupy state. Top it with a little burrata cheese. So burrata here, burrata there, burrata everywhere. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao. Here you have a compact picture of Liguria. You've got the sea. You've got the cliffs. You've got people living at the edge. This is what living at the edge means. If you look up there and you see how crowded and how compact this town is. And look at the spectacular view that they have. And then around that are all of these terraced cliffs with got olives, you've got grapes, you've got palm trees, pine trees. This is like heaven.